Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to review the Emax F4 Magnum All-in-One FPV Stack. The specs are pretty impressive. It features an Omnibus F4 Betaflight flight controller with a built-in OSD, an onboard buzzer, the ESC controller is 30 amperes with a 40 ampere burst. The included receiver is an FR Sky XM Plus receiver and the VTX board is a 48 channel switchable 25 and 200 millivolts board. It comes in this box. Inside we get in all the parts. First of all we get in the main unit. On the bottom of the main unit you can find a 30 ampere 4-in-1 ESC controller that supports between 2 to 4S LiPo batteries. On the middle we have here the flight controller, it's an F4 flight controller also with a built-in buzzer. And on the top you can find a switchable 25 and 200 millivolts video transmitter. Besides that we get in two 14 AWD cables in order to connect the ESC controller to the XT60 connector. Some stickers, XT60 connector with heat rings, XM Plus receiver. So this package is intended to use with FR Sky compatible transmitters. You can also use your own transmitter but in this package we're getting the XM Plus receiver which you need to only assemble here on the right side so it's pretty easy. And besides connecting the motors it's the only soldering work you will have to do on this board. You're also getting this connector for the camera, a pigtail for the VTX and you're also getting this antenna for the VTX. So you have two options, you can use this antenna or you can use the pigtail and then you can use an SMA antenna and probably I'm going to use this one because I don't think the range is going to be very good with this antenna but if you don't want to fly a quadcopter too far this option should be great as well. On the bottom of the box we can find the instruction manual. So we're getting the instruction manual for the XM Plus receiver and also the instruction manual for the F4 Magnum. The instruction manual is pretty straightforward and by the way it uses the Omnibus F4 firmware so when you're going to upgrade the firmware don't forget to use the Omnibus F4 correct file. Now be careful always put an antenna in order to prevent the transmitter from getting burnt because if you're going to connect it to a power supply without having an antenna it, the transmitter can be toasted and then you will have to change it. You can also buy all the parts here separately so you can replace the EC controller and the board and of course the receiver and the VTX. In case something goes wrong, for example you burned the VTX, it can be bought separately, so it's a good thing to know. Setting up the VTX is done using the button over here. If you long press it for 10 seconds, you can see that now the dot is present. When the dot is present it is on 200 milliwatt mode and when you turn off the dot, now it's on 25 milliwatt mode. If you long press this button for 2 seconds, now we can select the band. You have six options. If you press it again for two seconds, now you can select the channels. So you have eight channels, six bands, which is a total combination of 48 options. And just refer to this user guide and you can configure your favorite band and channel using this table. The weight including the JST connector that I added is 23.17 grams. The dimensions of this flight controller is 36.2 by 41.6 by 15.4 millimeters and if we measure the total height it is about 19.5 millimeters and using it on my next build should save me a lot of time because everything is pretty much already connected so in the next build I'm going to use the T-Motor F40 third version this is the 2600 kV version and the Relay CC Carbon Star racing frame it should be a very interesting build as for FPV camera I'm either going to use the Runcam Swift Mini or the Owl Plus 2 winter is coming so I need to prepare myself because it's going to get darker much earlier I wish they had an option to add a more powerful VTX because I think that 200 millivolts is a bit too low in some cases and having a 500 or 600 milliwatt options would have been a much better choice. The good thing of course that it does provide a very easy option if you're going to build a quadcopter even your first one it's going to be very easy all you have to do just connect the motors FV camera and you're good to go. There is a built-in buzzer, 
and connecting also the receiver will be a breeze especially if you're using the included XM Plus because it is designed to use this receiver. So hopefully it's going to perform well on my next build. Stay tuned to see it. As always, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions about this flight controller or any other products, feel free to ask it in the comment section below and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.